Here's the pull start mechanism on that, uh, the recoil mechanism on that tiller. I already uh, unwrapped the, the cord from around this pulley. There's actually just enough clearance so you can pull it out that way. So if you don't want to take it all apart, you might be able to actually get away with just doing what I'm going to try and do, which is fish the wire right through the hole through here and tie a knot on it and then rewrap it and see if that works. So on the polar end here, on the handle end, uh, sometimes you have a plastic cap you have to pop off to get to the knot, back the hose uh, uh, the line out, cut the knot off like I just did, and pull it right out. So we're going to reuse that. Then uh, this end here, just pull it out the reverse way. bunched up in there from, you know, I'm just going to cut that, make it easier, I'm going to cut this little section off where it's all, the sheathing is all bunched up. Yeah, I opted instead to cut the knotted end off because I want to try and preserve the length of this rope so I can measure off my new rope. I had to measure off a new hunk of rope and I put a little extra in there to give me, to make up for the, the sheathing that was bunched up at the end where it snapped might be hiding some of the original length and then also just make it a little easier for me to tie my uh, final knot. So I'm going to start by tying a knot at one end. Simple square knot will suffice. Feeding it back through this hole can be a little tricky but just use a small sharp object and you can poke it through to get it started and then uh, I'll line it up and again using my screwdriver just get it to poke through the hole and pull it through. Now I'm going to wind it up. Now I've wound it and uh, see it actually recoils like it should. So what I want to do now is I want to slip the handle on there, but I want to pull back a little bit on this so that it's got some tension on it then tie my knot so that when I release it, this will come all the way up here. Because if I just put it on there loose like that, what will happen is when I pull it, the uh, handle will hang and there will be a few inches of uh, rope that will be exposed. So that's what you want when you're done. You want to pull it and you let go. It snaps back all the way. Now I decided to double up the knot. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I do. And uh, I just leave it like a quarter of an inch before I cut it. And you don't want to cut it flush with the knot because then the knot might uh, pull out. Well, let's throw it on the machine and see how it works. All right, let's see. Ah, see? I didn't pull it out enough when I knotted it. That's easy enough to fix. actually running pretty decent. This is, uh, as I was mentioning, it had a lot of water in it. I got the fuel off right now. I have forgotten the fuel on. You see it leaked because the bowl was sticking, spreading the bowl. If I turn the fuel on, if I turn up the RPMs, it'll die. See the white smoke? See that's it's pulling water into the uh, combustion chamber. There's just so much water in this tank in the bottom. So I gotta drain out the tank, drain out the bowl, probably pull the bowl and clean it just good measure, and then see what it does. All right, so I opened up the bowl drain, put a hose on it, and left it running into my waste gas can, and I'm just going to leave that run and go do something else. Well, it's evening now, and I got most of the gas to drain out, but because of the unusual shape of the bottom of the tank, there's still some in there, and that's going to have some water in it, so I definitely want to get that out. I could unbolt the tank and tip it over and do it that way, but uh, I really don't feel like dealing with that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pour denatured alcohol in there, I've tilted it, tilted the unit forward so that it's all right down in here. I'm going to pour denatured alcohol in here. The alcohol molecules will bond with the water molecules 
and then I'll be able to uh, drain the majority of that back out and the residue that's left behind will be um, combined and burn in the combustion chamber. All right, now I've drained off the majority of that alcohol. So now I'm going to uh, shut off the bowl drain and I'm gonna pour in this gas that I pre-mixed with fuel stabilizer. Okay, engine's cold so I'll get the choke on, fuel on. Oh man. Huh. Just broke my recoil rope right off. Guess I can't use this rope, huh? Hey. Upon closer inspection, my rope didn't break. My knot pulled out. Guess I should have double knotted that inner knot. Oh well. Uh, just for the sake of expediency, I'm going to use this little groove that's right on here and do a little quick wrap around and see if I can't start it the way my father used to start our rototiller. Actually, we never had a rototiller. We had a cultivator. Walk behind cultivator. Doing in between the rows. But anyways, it's a similar principle. Try that again. All right, that worked. That was the easiest thing to do, but fix that recoil later. That knocking sound isn't an engine knock. It's it's a motor mount, uh, or uh, actually not a motor mount. Something inside here, because I was able to uh, get it stopped by pushing on a bracket in there before. All right, let that run a bit. Choke is. Oop. She died. Did I shut the fuel off? No, uh, the fuel's still on. Should have kept running. Well, it's supper time. I'll mess with this in the daylight. Guess I'm gonna have to get some different kind of rope too. Because not only did this uh, not pull through, but the other problem is that this outer sheathing on this rope already frayed. And uh, so the nylon cording is exposed. So that didn't work. Oh well. This was actually clothesline rope, so that probably wasn't the right stuff.